Hello everyone, Garnet here, and welcome to this Sims 4 Speed Decorate. The original builder of this house is Sarah Amania. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. I said it the best way I could. If you want to check them out, please do check them out below. Uh, their name, their origin ID will be down below, so you can look them up on the gallery. Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate Christmas. Happy Holidays to everyone else. I personally celebrate Christmas, so that's why this is a Christmas decorate. So, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, the download link for this build is down below. The CC comes with the download, so you don't gotta worry about it. So you can go download it there. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me how you enjoy the build down below. The original build is called Autumn Neighbors. When I saw that this creator on the gallery makes these really cool builds where it's like tiny little neighborhoods all in one lot, I am obsessed, honestly. I did a tiny home one a little while ago, but I'm honestly obsessed because it just, it's a whole different atmosphere than the rest of the game. Like you can make whatever your heart's desire a little neighborhood. And so you can make it any style or any way you want. And I find that I enjoy the builds a lot more. So they inspire me to build more because they're like a cu custom atmosphere. So. Yeah, I hope you all enjoy this house as much as I enjoyed decorating it. I was, I've been really, really feeling these winter holiday vibes and I just wanted to share those vibes with the world. Since the size of the home is relatively moderate compared to a tiny home, the difficulty for me decorating this home, I would say, is a little bit higher on the scale. This house took me about maybe four hours to decorate. I'm pretty fickle when it comes to decorating. It always takes me a very, very long time. So I like building a lot, but sometimes I just like decorating. But the decorating is such a long process that sometimes decorating can get exhausting. A lot of the times I will build a beautiful, awesome, wonderful, super realistic home, but then not decorate at all. Like I did in my one of my last videos, I didn't decorate because decorating just takes so long because you sit and you spend a lot of time imagining what sims would live there what they would be doing what activities as a family they would be doing where would they throw their clutter where would they throw their papers and their boxes where would they put their storage do they want workout equipment it's just a lot more thinking involved this home personally reminds me of my Sims 3 speed build I did about a year ago, 852 Christmas Street. I really enjoyed that speed build a lot, and this house reminds me a lot of that speed build. I get a weird nostalgia, but it's very strange because that speed build was done in The Sims 3, and this speed build is done in The Sims 4. I feel like finally my decoration style is translating over because I've only been super into The Sims 4 recently, so I haven't had years upon years and years of time to decorate and build homes, so I don't feel like my building and my decorating has been the same level of quality it has been when I play Sims 3. My personal advice for decorating would be to look at Pinterest boards of Tumblr, -y, Inspo. On Tumblr, I think Tumblr and Pinterest are very good resources to look at interior decoration. And sometimes, you know, professionals will post on Pinterest. There will be professional portfolios that you can look at and reference and take inspiration. And for building and cast, the creator that I think is the most inspiring personally is Gruesims on Tumblr. You can check them out in the description below if you wish. I really enjoy their content. I really enjoy their creative sims. I really enjoy their building. Their building I have never seen before. Like it is just 
unparalleled to anything else I've ever seen and I absolutely really really love their content. If you guys have any personal recommendations, I would highly appreciate it if you left them down below in the comments and let me know who your favorite Simler is or your favorite Pinterest person is for your inspiration. I would highly appreciate that. This house has two bedrooms. One of them is a more adult be bedroom, possibly a parent's bedroom, and the other one has been decorated to resemble a kid's bedroom. It's relatively gender neutral in my opinion. I use some pinks and some blues and some greens, so I think any child can sleep there. I decorated this lot in Windenburg, so it kind of has some Windenburg-like qualities. I believe the wallpaper for the stone on the building is from Get Together. I think, personally, the placement of this lot in Windenburg is probably the best lot placement for uniform style. If you play in this house and you download this lot and you put your sims here, I would heavily appreciate it if you guys would send really cool pictures of the sims, of your stories in this house, to the community discord down below. I love seeing you guys post things in there. I think it's super awesome. I love that little community that, cult that I'm cultivating, so I would appreciate a lot if you did that. The CC is included in the download below. I don't have all the expansion packs, but I do have almost all of them except for Get Famous and High School Years. So you might need quite a bit of packs for this home to look the way it should, but I do use a lot of CC, so the general consensus should be there. One of my favorite things I did with this house is that I put a secret bookshelf next to the fireplace and the TV, which leads to a separate room with a security camera and it's like a little office. And I figured like a secret story is like, oh, they're like a, a corrupt politician where they do all this illegal stuff in this room or like maybe they are a police officer and they need to keep it all private or a judge and they need to keep their files and their work private. Um, I thought it was a cool thing. I don't usually add bloopers like that in my, in my decorates, but I thought it was cute and cool and I really like the idea of the hidden bookcase in The Sims 4. See guys, what did I tell you? This is exactly why decorating takes me so long. Because I think and I imagine the sims that would live here. Sometimes after I make houses, I make decorating uh, videos, I go and I actually make the sims. I make the sims that I envision to live in these spaces. And it's all in good fun. If I were to choose to do a build or to do a decorate, on a normal day, when I don't hate myself, I would probably choose a house build because it is just, for me personally, it is so much easier to build a house. But this only applies in The Sims 3. For some reason, for me, the dimensions in The Sims 4 are just slightly different or something than The Sims 3. So it is so much harder for me to build a house in The Sims 4 that looks good because my brain is thinking of Sims 3 dimensions when The Sims 4 has quite a different dimension, I feel. I've seen recently a lot of people have been complaining about the everyday clutter kit that just came out for The Sims 4 and I feel like a lot of those items could have just been custom content like you're paying five dollars for a pack when you can go to The Sims 3 source and just download hundreds and hundreds and pot hundreds of custom objects. A lot of the time they look Max's match and I think that's pretty cool. So I'm not really worried about any of the new kits. I have all the custom content in the world that I need. As you guys can see in my decorating, I use a lot of custom content. Custom content is my favorite thing because it is 100% free besides the grueling amount of time that I have to go through to find it. 
Like, most Simmers like the idea of having a lot of clutter, but to be honest, for me, personally, when I have a lot of CC clutter, it can become a nightmare very quickly. Because if I have hundreds or lots and lots of CC clutter, a lot there might be duplicates, a lot of them have the same vibe, a lot of them are the same concept, like one stack of magazines isn't is is the concept of a stack of magazines is pretty common. So the other stack of magazines that I have are gonna look relatively similar. So I feel like I don't really need much more clutter. I feel kinda cluttered out, like I have quite a bit of clutter already. For the kitchen here, I keep the counters, a couple of them relatively cleared off because in cottage living, it allows you and children to cook together. So I felt like in this house, maybe the mom and the, the child would be cooking Christmas dinner and they would be working together and everybody would, can, can work together in the kitchen as a family to make the meal. I recently got parenthood and I am really, really loving the parenthood cabinets and counters. The counters are okay, but the cabinets, the cabinets are where it's at. I can pretty much pair these cabinets with majority of my CC countertops and it's beautiful. I love it so much. I love the the one where it's long and it's got a ton of clutter on it. It's like clutter that's in the room that I didn't have to put there is clutter that I enjoy. I added a back porch to this home. This home was not originally built with a back porch. My only criticism of this home is that they don't have backyards. It is pretty much guaranteed in real life that a home will have a back door. You need a back door because it is a fire hazard. If you don't have a back door and there's a fire, girl, you are in trouble. You are in a lot of trouble if you can't get to the front door, okay? So it is a law in a lot of countries to have a front door and a back door. Like we learned this lesson forever ago, okay? Forever ago, so in The Sims, for me personally, I just cannot play in a house that does not have a back door. It just, it's such a big pet peeve of mine because I just know that this is just not real. Like it's, it's just not possible. So whenever I do any decorating, whenever I do any building, I put a back door. So I had to add one in this home and I think the back porch ended up being very, very cool. The only personal exception to the rule for me is tiny homes because a lot of cases tiny homes are built by regular everyday people who don't really know what they're getting into and it's tiny, it's a tiny home. So if there's like a fire in that space, I feel like maybe you wouldn't need a front door. I'm not sure. I feel like most tiny homes that I look at that online don't really have back doors it's more like here's a front door and we got a giant window you know and another thing to know is that tiny homes a lot of the time are converted from a van or from a rv and turned into a tiny home so a lot of the time that's the case and i feel that a fire in that space you know you'd be able to escape easier because it's such a small space that you know your door is like two feet away don't quote me on that i am not an expert in tiny homes i am just a simmer i honestly this is just speculation of mine you know so don't don't take my uh don't take my word and my commentary on tiny homes um as facts i don't know enough about fire safety in tiny homes but i know that in regular homes, you need a front and a back door. Maybe tiny homes might not need a front and a back door because sheds, which are usually pretty similar sizes to tiny homes, don't have a front and a back door, but there's always usually windows. So I feel like maybe they make the exception possibly with the windows, because I know that if there's not an extra door, you need a window that you can climb out of. In this house, I make sure it is critical that the dining room has a lot of seats because I feel as though 
not only Christmas is about opening presents, but it's also about having a grand meal with your family. So I feel like maybe family would come out of town and come and spend Christmas with them and eat and open presents and things like that. I just wanted to make sure that the dining room was a space where a lot of sims could sit and eat if they wish. What are you all planning to do on the holidays? I would love to hear it below. Um, I know a lot of people like to go on vacation. Uh, some people spend Christmas Eve shopping. I don't understand that at all. Like, who wants to be anywhere out on Christmas Eve? Traffic is horrifying. Okay, do all your Christmas shopping before Christmas. Please, guys, I'm warning you. You don't want to do it, okay? If you can do it, if you can do your shopping before Christmas Eve, do it. Don't procrastinate because I've had to go Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve and it was a nightmare. We were stuck in traffic for like two hours and then when we got to the store, they didn't even have what I wanted. If you really want to buy a gift for someone and you have to order it pretty close to Christmas, try and get it off of Amazon. Try and get it off of Walmart shopping. Have it delivered to your house so you don't have to go anywhere because I feel like that is a nightmare. I don't wish on anybody. So try try and do your Christmas shopping before Christmas, guys. I know I know a lot of people would think, oh that's just a given, but like I was outside on Christmas Eve trying to shop. So you know sometimes people don't think about it and it just happens. But it just you gotta be diligent on it because it is not a fun time. Like I feel like even if you wait like a week in advance it would be infinitely better than going on christmas eve it just seems like everyone knows not to go on christmas eve but everyone like a lot of people do it and it's just like oh my gosh and a lot of the time it's blizzarding outside uh, i'm talking about an experience of the u.s like we all drive cars here so we don't have that beautiful awesome mass transit in most places so traffic jams are just a given in on the highways because most of our transportation is connected with vehicles and using highways to get places so the highways are all jammed car accidents are probably more likely it's blizzarding outside you're you, it's cold in your car like just don't go really close to Christmas. Get the holiday sales, get the deals like a month in advance, ideally, if you can. But if you can't, at least try a week. At least, at least try a week. I feel like with this little, ro this little room, you could totally take it and make a little basement and have like a secret layer. That would be super cool too. But I really like the secret office. It's like, it gives the build some story, some lore, you know? I've been feeling very on and off with Sims 3. I don't think I've played Sims 3 in a couple months. It's been a while, like for some reason, The Sims 4 has just got me hooked right now, guys. Like it has just got its claws in me. I am just hooked right now. And I think it's because I've been using Alpha CC. So it's like the same vibe as The Sims 3. I feel like maybe the reason why I was never able to get into The Sims 4 is because of the aesthetic choice that they decided to go with and believe it was it was a choice okay i i personally hate the cartoon clay hair um it has a time and a place but i feel like i get more invested in my sims and i get more into it and more into the story if my sims have alpha cc hair if they don't have alpha cc hair i find that i play the sim family for like 10 minutes and then i turn it and that's just so common for me. Like, for some reason, the Alpha CG hair just really engages me in the gameplay. If you guys are the same, totally tell me down below. Like, I tried the Maxis match, but I just feel like it has a time and a place. And that time and place is just not most of the time for me personally. But no diss on anyone that loves Maxis match. There are really nice, good quality hairs. I'm just not interested anymore. And my only problem with Maxis Match is the hair. I download Maxis Match clothes all of the time, and I really like the look of meshing 
Maxis Madge clothes and Alpha CG hair. It's just very aesthetically pleasing to me and it's like... I feel like the cartoony factor shouldn't have necessarily been translated to the hair necessarily. I just feel like it's kind of out of place a little bit. If you think about it though, in a sense, it makes sense because I imagine the Sims, tr the Sims team is definitely trying to avoid the phenomenon called Uncanny Valley where when you look at something and it looks human but it's not human, it gives you this very uncomfortable, nauseating feeling, it's just not a good time. And I feel like with The Sims 4 having even better graphics, they were like, we need to avoid this at all costs so everyone's gonna have Play-Doh hair. Everybody. And I feel like that is a smart move to an extent. I only say to an extent because in the base game it's very hard to make a sim look hyper-realistic. You definitely need custom content to put pores on the face, etc. So for them to give everyone clay hair when nothing else in the game enables you to make a sim look super duper human just feels kind of redundant to me. Like it feels like redundant. And I feel like another reason why they may have given everyone Play-Doh hair is because it's lower poly, which makes it run better on slower machines, which is very smart for expanding the base who consume your game. So they can sell more DLC. If you can't run the game, the base game on your computer, you're not gonna buy the seasons and the university life and the, the vampires, you know. The only thing that I would do differently with this house now that I have sat with this house for a while is that I would make the child's bedroom more festive. Like for me, child's bedrooms are kind of like a, like a, you know, parents just buy the generic stuff and throw it in there and then your kids grow up and you sell it or throw it away. Like, it's a very short period of time. So a lot of people, you know, they just get their kids, their baby stuff and then they throw it out, you know? So I didn't, I don't personally focus too much on kids' bedrooms when it comes to honing my skills of decorating. So I feel like if I were to go back at this house and redo parts of it, I would definitely make the child's room more festive. I would make it more like the Polar Express bedroom with more greens and more more trains and, and things like that, like festive things. I just made it a generic bedroom. That is my only personal regret with decorating this home. I also added some cool activities for Sims to participate in in the backyard. I added them a hot tub. I figured if they had a secret office, they probably are a little bit loaded, so they'd have enough money to purchase a hot tub. This house originally had a very autumn, a very Halloween vibe. And honestly, I was going to try and decorate it with that spooky vibe in mind, but it's like once October ends, once Halloween is over, I just don't feel that vibe anymore. I'm just kind of like more leaning into the Christmas vibe, leaning more into the Thanksgiving vibe. I just decided to go all the way and just make it Christmas. I'm not invested enough personally in the Thanksgiving vibe. Even though the Thanksgiving vibe is really cute, I am just like, I don't know, I just don't get inspiration from it personally. The screenshots are coming up really soon. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As I said before, thank you all so much for getting to the end of this video. I appreciate you all so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoy it and you have a wonderful day and a beautiful life. Bye everyone, check out the rest of my other videos. Thanks!